for nearly two decades, the research and forecasting communities come together for the annual spring experiment. It all takes place inside the NOAA hazardous weather test bed. Sitting side by side, forecasters test new ideas and provide feedback to the researchers. The experiments function as a pipeline to transition research into new and useful tools for National Weather Service forecasters. So when COVID hit in March 2020, the future became unclear. In-person collaboration was off the table. With everyone working from home, could the spring experiment survive? We had to make a decision whether or not we would continue to do the experiment but move it to a virtual format or just cancel it entirely. If these experiments were continued to be canceled for these years of telework, it could slow down research a good five to ten years. And so we started brainstorming ideas about how to make this function in a virtual environment. Researchers knew there'd be lots of preparation needed to adapt to a virtual setting. But thanks to some foresight and new technology in the works, the teams wouldn't have to start from scratch. In the two or three years before COVID hit, we had overhauled our web page so that we could do our model evaluation activities completely online. And so our surveys were online and then our model comparison page that we used to do these evaluations was also online. One of the things that was up and coming at the same time as the shutdown was cloud access. Using cloud computing, we could turn around and take these operational systems that the forecasters use day to day in their forecast office and put them up in the cloud environment where we can access it remotely from anywhere. One of the biggest challenges was trying to recreate the spirit and atmosphere of the test bed. It's a very fun, energetic environment to be in and you learn a lot. Uh, and you have lots of these like personal interactions with people and you have this opportunity to uh, have one-on-one -on -one discussions, go out to lunch with somebody that, that you've just met and to learn about what they do. So when you're in the virtual environment and you're sitting at home in front of your own computer looking at just these panels of different faces you know, that are also doing the same thing, you just don't feel that same energy. On the brighter side, going virtual did create new opportunities and more collaboration. In the HWT, we're limited by the physical space, so we can only fit you know, so many people. But in a virtual environment, we're essentially unlimited. We can get a really diverse opinion set by being able to source somebody from Guam or somebody from Alaska that wouldn't have been able to do the travel in a regular forecast year. Best news of all, the experiments were successful. Even with the shift to a virtual format, the teams were still able to test innovative concepts. So one example of that is artificial intelligence and machine learning. In the last few years, while we've been virtual, we have made some really significant progress in this area. And it's become very clear that there is a lot of potential for AI and machine learning to really improve the products for severe weather forecasting. Last year, during our virtual experiments, we tested the tornado algorithm, which highlighted an area of circulation and provided a probability of a tornado. And feedback was great because it provided a first guess for what we're asking forecasters to do, which is provide uh, probabilistic information associated with storm objects. We're excited to continue our experiment and build on the momentum we developed last year. For spring 2022, all experiments were virtual, and the team expects future experiments to be a combination of virtual and in-person. Virtual gives us the ability to have a diverse group of people from areas around the world, and in-person gives us the ability to kind of mix feedback, especially if we bring in end users that can give different feedback to forecasters all sitting down with researchers in the same room. To learn more about the spring experiment, be sure to check us out online and follow us. Are you craving more than just bite-sized? Check out Pod Size Science. The link is in the description below. And in this podcast, Adam and Kristen share more about the shift to a virtual experiment and provide more information about tools they've been testing and progress they've made.